And joining me now on Good Living is local author Bruce Ansley about a local book set in New Brighton, Gods and Little Fishes, a boy in a beach. Bruce, welcome mm. to Good Living. Thanks Thank for you. joining us. Nice How are here. you? Good. You'll be pleased the book's out and, and everybody's really enjoying it. Well, I hope they are. It was certainly fun to write. Yeah. Fun to live there too. Yeah, but, uh, you love it, don't you? I do. That's one it's of the things... Just having a look through the book, Bruce, is the, the amazing little facts and things about New Brighton that really was such a huge place for New Zealand, wasn't it, when it was up and it running was, in its heyday? It was, it was uh, I mean, it was, I think, the most prosperous place in the, in the country, uh, the busiest place. It was Saturday shopping, of course, that did it. Mm. And uh, we all thought it was just because it was a great and glorious place, of course, right beside <laughs> the sea. But it's still a great and glorious place right beside the sea, but it's just not as busy as it once was. Yes, I know, which is such a shame, isn't it? It is. It's a kind of story of New Zealand, isn't it? Because, it is. um, you know, uh, New Brighton was just a, a town, a suburb. Mm. Well, it wasn't for the people who lived there. It was a very special place. But, uh, you know, what happened to it, I think, happened to a lot of the country. But it just happened to Brighton and Spades, that's all. Mm, mm, it did. Big, big amounts of Spades, didn't yeah. it? What made you decide to, to write, write about it and, and about your life growing up there? Well, I talked to so many people about things that had happened in New Brighton and, um, and were still happening. And, um, uh, you know, most people said, oh, that's kind of outrageous, you know, did that, oh, that didn't really happen, blah, blah, <laughs> yeah, blah, you're blah, pulling blah. My leg. and it did, and, but then um, an old friend of mine, Alan Coburn, whose family owned Gracie's, which was one of the oldest businesses in New Brighton, it, it started before the, the Second World War, and Alan was the, the third generation of that family uh, who was running the shop, it was under a different name, but it was still the same shop in the same place. Mm. And um, he was the longest surviving New Brighton businessman, the last one left of the good old days, really. And he was going out of business. And uh, earlier this year, he actually did. The shop finally closed and the staff left, and uh, it's now Quicksilver. Um, right. uh, but nonetheless, it's... Uh, and he left, and that just seemed to me to mark the end of a, an era. Mm. And. Uh, and it didn't look like anybody else was going to rush in and write about New Brighton, so I did. So you did. <laughs> How long did it take? Uh, to write the book? Mm. Oh, not that long, actually. It, um, I mean, my memories of it are very fresh, maybe a year or so. Is that um, right? mm. yeah. How did you remember everything that had happened to you? Well, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I had a lot of people helping me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of good sessions, and I've met a lot of people... Uh, you know, who are, are still living there in, in uh, many cases. I mean, a lot of people haven't moved. Mm. I've just moved slightly up, you know, to, into, uh, into a hill overlooking... But you can still see it. I can still see it. So it still has still a very strong every, place in your heart. Every bit of it. <laughs> yeah, because, of course, you've done a lot of travelling as well, but it's great that yeah. you always come back to, to Canterbury. Always come back. Mm. It's such a beautiful place. It is a beautiful place, mm. isn't it? Your mm. children, are they, are they still here? No. Are they going to come back? Uh, I don't think so. They're, they live in Auckland. Oh, do they? And um, one of them owns that. Well, they own a restaurant here, a place called Wagamama's in mm. Oxford Terrace. Oh, right. It's, uh, so, but apart from um, that, uh, they they don't show all that much interest in Christchurch, really. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day they'll see the line again. I yeah. just wanted to quickly ask you as well, what was it like working on the Sun uh, newspaper in the London? The Sun. Oh, Did hectic. you get to write any of those crazy headlines? No. Oh. I didn't even get to see the page three oh, girls. Really? <laughs> More importantly. <laughs> but a good experience yeah, nonetheless. It was a great experience. I, mean, I had over four million circulation then. It was a huge newspaper. Oh. Most of the time we just sat, uh, spent sitting around in the, in the evening and would go home. If you got one story every two weeks, you'd be doing You're pretty doing well. well. Yeah. Go to the pub for your pint at lunchtime and away uh, you go. Well, we all worked at night. But, uh, <laughs> there you go. Now, of course, this book is out and about, Bruce. Um, Gods and Little Fish is a Boy in a Beach. It's available in all good bookstores now. It is. So pick up it's a it. copy. It's a wonderful read and about is such a thank fantastic you. part of our history. Right here Great. in Canterbury. Bruce, thank you very much. Thank you.